probably only seen it from the windows of a subway as it pulls into Davisville Station. Arguably, this is one of the most peaceful places in the city. And ironically, more history lives here than anywhere else in Toronto. So let's go into the gates of Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Our first stop is perhaps the most famous resident and the most famous mausoleum here at Mount Pleasant, and that is the, the Eaton Mausoleum. Timothy Eaton is buried here. He, of course, was the founder of the Eaton's department store, and now the Eaton's name is associated with philanthropy across the city. So I'm working from a map here, and just around the corner from the Eaton Mausoleum is another very famous resident here. A little more difficult to find. Well, there it is. You can see why this was a little more difficult to find because it's become hidden by overgrowth. Foster Hewitt, the father of play-by-play -play hockey, a Canadian voice heard in the early days of radio and then TV, credited with stringing these four words together for the first time on any airwaves. The next stop here at the mausoleum and crematorium. In fact, our next resident actually has this building dedicated to him. William George Barker, better known as Billy Barker, the most decorated war hero, not only in the history of Canada, but the entire British Commonwealth. He was a World War I flying ace. You know what I really liked about him? He was a bit rogue at times. He would go out on missions that were not authorized and be successful at them. He once as well buzzed Piccadilly Circus in London, just for the heck of it. Yes, this is the unmistakable gravesite of Steve Stavro, former owner of the Toronto Maple Leafs, founder of Knob Hill Farms, among other things. I've been looking for this next marker for the last 45 minutes. I finally found it. You may not recognize the name. Jenny Smilly Robertson, Canada's first female surgeon. Back in the early 1900s, no hospital in Toronto would employ her or even allow her to work in the hospital. She went to Philadelphia, trained there, did surgery there, came back to Toronto and again was not allowed in any hospital. In 1911, she got together with a number of other women and organized Women's College Hospital, actually working out of people's homes. She did her first surgery on a kitchen table. Listen to that, it's so peaceful here. All you can hear are the birds, some heat bugs. And if you listen really carefully in this section, You'll hear this. That's because right there is the grave of Glenn Gould, one of the most renowned pianists Canada has ever produced. This is section 29 of the cemetery, and this, in a very prominent spot, is a prominent marker for a very prominent man. Frederick Banting, the discoverer of insulin, and just around the corner, the gravesite of Charles Best, Banting and Best. Best was actually a student at the time, only worked with Banting because he won a coin toss, did not receive the Nobel Prize alongside Banting though, and that to this day is a controversy. I'll preface this next one with who is Canada's longest serving Prime Minister at 21 years, 154 days. Well, he's buried right here. William Lyon Mackenzie King is the man that got Canada through the Second World War. Wow, this final grave that I was looking for, I've been looking for for the last hour. I can see why I had a hard time finding it. Yes, behind this overgrowth is the grave of Big Daddy, the first chair of the Regional Municipality of Toronto. In fact, a name you probably curse every day if you're a commuter. But this is the grave of Frederick G. Gardner of the Fred Gardner Expressway.